hello guys and welcome to another tutorial and in this tutorial i am going to get you guys up and ready with docusign so for those of you who don't know about docusign docusign is an e-signature platform and you can utilize this platform to send documents to emails and get their signatures back in the form of a pdf and uh, I believe this is the first part of uh, this tutorial series so in this first part I am going to get you familiar with uh, the API calls and uh, I'm really excited to share uh, this knowledge with you guys so let's get started so first of all what you guys need is uh, to install the bubble API connector because we are going to use the API connector to make API calls uh, to DocuSign and the next thing which you guys are going to need is postman so postman is a very handy tool it's a tool where you can make api calls and you know get errors get responses and it's much better uh, on postman but we are not going to use postman to make api calls we need postman for something else which i will share with you uh, uh, further down in this video so stay with me and we'll make it quick okay so once you have done installing postman uh, the next thing we are going to need uh, to do is uh, explore how we can make uh, DocuSign API calls so uh, to understand that uh, obviously you need to start off with a DocuSign account so it's pretty easy you can just go to Google and search DocuSign developer you can uh, sign up to uh, a DocuSign developer account and once you are done uh, filling in the credentials setting up your profile uh, you'll be uh, taken to a page that looks like this so so just take a little bit of time and here we are so you can obviously go ahead and you know drag a document here and send it to an email you know through this dashboard but what we want is to do this with an API call so let's go ahead and see where we can uh, find our credentials for making API calls so I'm going to do the settings page here and it's authenticating me so here we are and you'll see a page that looks like this but we don't want anything to do with this page for now you can explore it on your own if you want to and if you wish to get uh, you know more information and uh, you know dive into a more depth so what we want is going to apps and keys and as you can see uh, this is my user id this is my api account id and this is my account base uri so what we'll need is uh, to add an integration key for an application and i'll just show you how we can uh, do that but before that let's uh, go ahead and uh, see what postman is needed for in this video so let's go on and see why we need postman okay so i'm here at the docusign developer and i'm here at the page that is called sdk and tools so uh, if you're having trouble finding this just google docusign developer sdk and tools and you'll automatically be shown this page at the top and now I'm going to uh, tell you why we need uh, Postman for. So, uh, if you uh, you know scroll a little down here, you can see that we have a Postman collection for uh, DocuSign, and this is handy because no one really wants to go here and search for a particular API call or go through all the API calls that are uh, provided to us. You know. 
you can get really messed up in opening a lot of tabs so let's start with postman collection so i'm going to click the postman collection and it shows me a page that is this right here so uh the first thing that you need obviously as you can see in the prerequisites is a docusign developer account uh, hopefully you've made it by now and then you need to install postman which obviously you would have done by now and a postman account is needed so uh, make sure to sign in or sign up with uh, your postman account and now in the next step we'll create an environment for ourselves all right guys so it's time to set up our environment so let me just get this tab over here because we are going to need things from uh, this side here so let's go on and set up our environment so before we set up our uh, environment these are the things which uh, we need to fill out uh, from our uh, keys and app section so let's go on ahead and do it so we are here as you can see we need an integration key but currently we do not have an integration key so let's go ahead and make an integration key real quick so let's make this uh let's give the name of demo and let's create an application so this is our integration key and for authentication we would prefer to use authorization code grant because it's much easier and it's uh you know it also supports automation and not implicit grant so once you click on authorization grant you need to add a secret key here and it's generally a good practice to just copy it because uh, after some time this key is obviously going to be hidden and we'll just see the ending characters so we're done with uh, the secret key we have the integration key now we need to add a redirect uri so because we're in a demo environment we can actually write this as our redirect uri so after https we have www.example.com slash callback and we can hit save and there we have it we have our integration key and we also have the secret key i've already copied the secret key so let me just put in my secret key here now let me copy the integration key from here so copied here we are uh, obviously the environment is going to be demo the api version should be the latest one and let's create our environment Okay guys, so once you've set up your environment, the next step is to import our Postman collection uh, to our environment. So let's go on ahead and do that by clicking on the eSignature REST API. Let's click on Run in Postman. And when you do that, uh, you'll see this pop-up. Obviously, we'll need to fork the collection. And we're going to fork the collection. And the Postman is going to open here. So I'll just label it my port or okay sign. And uh, what uh, this workspace thing will do is, you know, it will overwrite your workspace to the workspace that is provided here with DocuSign account dash D. And this is going to help us tremendously. Uh, you can check or uncheck this uh, and click on for collection and once we're done with a uh, fork collection we should go back to our postman and then we'll have the collection here uh, so this is uh, an intensive uh, collection of uh, docusign's uh, api calls as you can see there are a lot of api calls so there is a lot of things that you can do with uh, docusign should you uh, need to do those things uh, but for these series of tutorials, uh, I'll be focusing on uh, getting the token and the refresh token, which will be demonstrated in this video. And in the next upcoming videos, 
I'll be showing you how we can send a document for signature and how we can get the document back uh, in uh, the signature form. So uh, as you can see, we have our environment DocuSign account dash D. So in the environment, so I'm just going to click this to set our environment as active and uh, the same is going to happen on our uh, docu uh, postman application uh, so I'm going to cut this and I'm going to go back to my application and in the environment I'm going to select this as active and now I'm going to go to our uh, DocuSign collection and in the DocuSign collection I'll be opening the authentication and looking at the authentication call so if you remember we selected the authorized code grant and this is what we are going to uh, use to make the API call so once we're here we are obviously going to see our API call and as you can see uh, the host environment for us is account dash d dot docusign dot com and uh, we have slash o auth and slash token and in the header we have uh, an authorization and its value in the form of an encoded key so this is going to help us set up the api call in bubble so let's go back to bubble and go back to our plugins and api connector so i've created an uh, api call here which is named as docusign and the authentication is none or self handled uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a call which is going to be of uh, getting a token so get token uh, it's going to be an action and the data type is json because we'll be receiving our tokens in the form of uh, json uh, we're going to choose post for this and as you can see in our postman we have the environment name which is account-d.docusign.com and OOT slash token OOT slash token we have it here and in the headers we are going to add a header which is going to be called authorization its uh, value is going to be basic with space now this is my old environments uh, encoded key but as I have created a new environment for this video I'm going to use the new encoded key and we can get the value of that in the environment quick look and here we have our encoded key so we can just copy the encoded key from here and paste it here after basic so one thing to note is that after basic there is a space just a single space and that's it so let's go on ahead and talk about how we are going to actually get our token so in postman if you look at the headers we have authorization basic encoded keys we have already added our encoded key back in our uh, bubble call and the next thing that i have added in parameters is code and grant type so if you go on to the body of our call in postman you can see that we do not have code from url and there's a way of getting this code uh, from URL. So this code is needed to just, you know, kickstart the get token call. And once we kickstart our get token call, we will get a refresh token. And after that, we can use this refresh access token call to get a new token after our current token expires. So let's go on and get our code from URL. Uh, I'm going to go back to our uh, postman collection page. So we have done the first step, the second step. So now we have the third step. So we are going to need our authorization code. And what we can do is we can copy this call. And we need to paste it here. So in our response type, we need code. In our scope, we need signature because we are using the e-signature api 
and for the client id we need our key and for the redirect uri we need our redirect uri which we already set up so let's go back to our dashboard and get client id and redirect uri so the client id here is the i key which is our integration key and the redirect uri is the callback uri which we set up uh, in when we were integrating uh, adding an integration key so uh, here we are we have our integration key we'll copy this and we're going to be inserting it here and the next thing we need is our uh, uri so uh i remember the uri so i'll just type it here https www.example.com slash callback so once you're done using this uh you know hitting enter will be taken to a screen like this so this is uh, for requesting the permission so we've created a new application which is demo and it's requesting permission we'll just allow access to it and this is an example domain so you have to keep an eye on the url because we're going to get our start code in the url so here it the code is and uh, you guys should remember that the code uh, expires pretty quickly i think it's uh, for two minutes so be quick about it and we can add it either here or in our uh, case we'll add our code over here i've added the code here so the next thing that we need is the grant type and we can type it as authorization code the key should be grant type and the value should be authorization code and as you can see the key is grant type and it is authorization code so let's go ahead and reinitialize the call and see what happens okay so once you've added the code over here that you got from uh, the example domain uh, hit on initialize call and we got our access token uh, the token type as bearer uh, the refresh token and as you can see it expires in 28,800 seconds the scope is signature let's go ahead and save this so once we are done with this uh, let's go on and create another call and we'll name this call as refresh token and uh, the type should be action we have it as post and uh, as you can see in the refresh access token call in the postman uh, we have a header of uh, authorization that is the same as uh, the call above which is get token so we can actually just uh, copy paste what we wrote in the previous call so here we are and the next thing that we are going to need in the body as you can see we have a refresh token uh, the value of the refresh token the grant type as refresh token so let's go ahead and do that as well uh, one thing i forgot to mention was uh, the body type should be form data not json uh, so uh, be mindful that uh, you need to change this to form data and then we're going to add the two parameters the first one was refresh token that has the refresh tokens value so you can just copy it from here and paste it over here now the refresh tokens value you can get from uh, manually entering and as you can see we have the refresh tokens value let's copy this till the end so i've copied this and i'm inserting the value here the next thing is grant type which is refresh token so grant type 
refresh token so once we're done with this uh, we'll need to enter the initialize call uh, here oh in all my excitement i forgot to enter the url so let's enter the url here we have the url we have everything so let's hit initialize and see what happens okay so once we hit uh, initialize in refresh token we are going to get our new access token and a new refresh token uh, so we're going to hit save the next thing we're going to do is um uncheck this private and we are going to empty the refresh tokens value because we are going to do things dynamically now uh, so uh, to do all this dynamically let's go to our data section we need to create a new table which is going to be named as token we are going to have three fields in it the first one is current token second one is refresh token and the last one is token expiry so for our page we don't have to display anything yet uh, because we're just authenticating our tokens uh, so let's go ahead to our workflow section uh, so we're going to uh, do when a condition is true so this is important because we are only going to kickstart the refresh token first and after that is done we are going to uh, uh, you know schedule an api workflow which is going to be a back-end workflow for refreshing the token so uh, we just want to do it once and we are only going to do this uh, when the page has loaded entirely what we are going to do we are going to get a token and after this we are going to also populate our uh, table which is going to be the creating a new thing uh, we're going to create a new token and the current tokens value is going to be result of step one's access token the refresh token value is going to be result of step one's refresh token and the token expiry is going to be result of step one's uh, expires in respectively so now that this is done uh, we can also put in a condition here so we are only creating a new token when result of step one's raw body text is not empty so this is a condition just to make sure that we are getting uh, uh, you know tokens from the api call and then we are creating our new token okay so once we are done uh, here now we are going to create a backend workflow to refresh our token so before doing that uh, you'll need to go to settings and api section and you'll need to check this enable workflow api and backend workflows so we can access our backend workflows so now i'm here in the backend workflow and uh, let's create a workflow so we've created a new API workflow let's name it refresh token so uh, go ahead and check this workflow can be run without authentication and ignore privacy rules of course so it works uh, without any problem now let's uh, give this workflow a token object so let's say token and let's keep this uh, its type to be token as well so uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to um, call the refresh token and we are going to give this token tokens refresh token once we're done with that we will need to change uh, our token as well so let's make changes to a thing uh token the current token value is going to be result of step one's access token the refresh token is going to be result of step one's uh refresh token and the token expiry is obviously going to be result of step one's expires in 
So once we're done with this, we would need uh, to make a recursion here for the refresh token to reinitialize itself again, but after a specific time. So uh, as we saw that we have 28,800 seconds, which is roughly eight hours uh, for a token to expire. So we can schedule an API call once again. And the workflow is going to be refresh token. And for the date, uh, we can use current date and time. Uh, seconds and we're going to add in uh, let's say 27,000 seconds and for the token we are going to give it so for the token we are going to give it a value of uh, result of step 2's token which is over here and that's how uh, we're going to make a flow for a uh, refresh token. So now we'll need to trigger this and we're going to do that by going to token. Uh, we're just doing this once when the page is loaded entirely, getting the token, creating the token. And now we are going to schedule an API workflow. The workflow name is refresh token. Uh, and we're going to do the same over here in current date and time. And we're going to add seconds to seven, 27,000 seconds here. And the token which we are sending is result of step two's token. Okay, so I'm going to click preview now. And here we are. Uh, the page is loaded entirely. DocuSign get token and create a new token and we have our token let's verify it by going to the data and here we are we have our token so one more step which is very important to uh, uh, tell you guys is that the access code which we have to enter in uh, this part expires within two minutes so uh, be sure to get a new code by going back to uh, the URL which we provided over here to get a new code, uh, provide the new code here and then hit preview so that you can get the current token and refresh token. So uh, once we have done uh, this, uh, we got our current token, we got our refresh token, we set up the backend workflow to uh, refresh the token uh, and yep, that's it for the uh, current token refresh token how we can uh, uh, refresh our tokens dynamically without uh, entering the details again and again uh, so in the next video uh, we are going to take a look at how we are going to send a document and then receive the document uh, once it's uh, been signed so stay tuned for uh, those videos guys and thank you for watching